I wanted to talk to you today about headaches and my take on why they're happening and why they keep coming back. And this includes you know, tension headaches, migraine headaches. I've even helped people with uh, trigeminal neuralgia with this type of uh, approach to understanding the neck and head. So let's go ahead and get into it. You know, there are nerves that, that are going up through the cervical spine and going up into the head that typically cause headaches. Many of you have probably been to physical therapists, chiropractors, or massage therapists and had uh, the muscles at the base of the skull, which are called suboccipital because they're below the occiput, suboccipital muscles uh, massaged that then temporarily relieve your headaches. And that's great, but the suboccipital muscles aren't the reason that you're having headaches. They're one of the things that are getting triggered that are creating your headaches. So there are usually larger forces acting on the suboccipital muscles that are causing them to become tense and full of knots that then create these headaches, regardless of you know, what type of headache it is. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Now, one of the major stressors to the head and neck region is the shoulder blade. If you think about the shoulder blade, look at it. It rests outside of the rib cage, and it is the center of function for the upper body system. If you look at the shoulder blade, you'll see it's a broad, flat bone here, very similar to one of your pelvic bones. There's only two places in the body these bones are occurring. One is at the shoulder, one is at the pelvis. Well, we all know that the pelvis is the center of our lower body and back function. So similarly, the shoulder blade is the center of upper body system function. But I've found that most practitioners probably have never even considered your shoulder blade as a source of your headaches before. And that's why I'm making this video. So hopefully it'll give you some ideas. I wanna take a moment here to please ask you to subscribe, like, and most importantly, share this video with other people suffering from headaches because this is the information that will likely help them. Thank you. The reason the shoulder blade can be linked to the suboccipital muscles and your headaches is that there are significant muscular attachments that attach from the shoulder blade into the spine and the base of the skull. And so dysfunction here is translated through these muscles to the cervical spine, causing compression, side bending, rotation, uh, and which then also irritates the suboccipital muscles too. These gradually become more and more stressed, creating knots that then pinch the nerves that go up into the head. And sometimes releasing those knots is helpful, but I've encountered a lot of patients who, when their suboccipital muscles are worked on, it actually triggers more headaches. And that's because they're just caught in this loop uh, of trying to, of the knots causing the headaches, but loosening the knots is causing more tension in the knots that is then triggering more headaches. So really, we have to understand why all these things are happening in the first place, and typically it's because the shoulder blade dysfunction. So what's going on with the shoulder blade that's then causing stress to the neck and the base of the skull and these headaches? Well, the most common problem that I found with the shoulder blade is that it's resting too low. It's something that I call a depressed scapula or depressed shoulder blade. And I've made this video to show you how to test for that yourself and determine whether this is what's causing your headaches. And so when the shoulder blade is depressed, what's happening is it's causing excessive tension on these muscles that are going from the shoulder blade up to the, the neck and the base of the skull, causing these kinds of problems. Now, a lot of you will say, oh, well, that's not my problem because my, I feel a lot of tension in my upper traps or my muscle right here, which is called the levator scapula. And so I feel like my muscles are too high or, or shoulders are always tensed up and resting too high. Well, that's because they are chronically stressed trying to fight off the depression that's occurring in the shoulder blade. So the muscles that depress the shoulder blade are much larger than the muscles that are holding up the shoulder blade, not to mention gravity itself. So the whole shoulder blade system weighs about 15 to 30 pounds depending on how big you are. And so imagine that all day long, pulling down on this system uh, together with the, these large muscles like the latissimus dorsi, 
uh, pectoralis major, uh, lower trapezius, all of these things are, can become activated and help pull the shoulder blade down. Not to mention the whole rib cage can be pulled down too. And I talk about that in uh, this video about radiculopathy. And also you can test for this condition in you uh, in this video about sciatic pain and side bending problems. So uh, this is a very common problem. In fact, most chronic neck pain or headache patients I've seen I can't remember the last patient I saw where their chronic head headaches were, weren't due to a depressed shoulder blade. So uh, I show you how to test for that again in this video, but this is why these things are causing headaches is because they are stressing the cervical and suboccipital muscles, which then tighten up and then cause constriction on the nerves that are entering the head, causing headaches. This can be unilateral, for instance, one shoulder blade may be at fault, or it may be bilateral, both shoulder blades are at fault. And usually a, it's a posture strategy that is uh, one of the problems here. Now, also if you work at a computer and your computer station isn't set up correctly to support your shoulder girdle system, this again will drag on your neck and head, triggering these types of uh, problems of excessive tension in the suboccipital muscles or compression in the neck structures that then cause bony changes, disc changes, and so forth, and ultimately headaches. I hope this clears up some questions you might have about why you're having chronic headaches. And you know, I've, I've written books about this and I've made lots of videos and I have a home exercise program to solve these kinds of problems if you're interested. All those links are below, including a 25% disc a 25% discount code below uh, if you want to try one of my home programs to solve these kinds of problems. <music>